All right, we're on chapter two of the Tanya. Chapter two of the Tanya talks about the Jewish soul. <clears throat> we learned in the first chapter of the Tanya that a Jew is born <clears throat> with responsibility. The first thing a Jew is given, even before he's born, is responsibility. And he's given power to fulfill this responsibility. What's the responsibility? So it says to be a tzaddik. And at least not to be a Russia. And even if everybody tells you you're a tzaddik, you have to look at yourself like a Russian. <clears throat> we, we talked about what exactly this means. And essentially it means that we're put into the world in order to improve the world, to make the world a godly place, to make the world a perfect place, to make the world the way God wants it. And one of the things that God wants from the world is that we should meet the challenges. That's what God wants, that we should meet challenges. There should be challenges and that we should meet them. That's what God made the world. <clears throat> So he said, but a Jew has power to do this because a Jew has been given an oath. Who's given this oath? Where is this oath? So the Rebbe says, well, a Jew has two souls. The oath is administered to the, what's called the godly soul. Only it appreciates godly things. <clears throat> I go to a person that's that's uh, tone deaf and tell him you're going to buy him a new piano and that he has the talent, he can write music more beautiful than, you know, the greatest composers. This is not what you're talking about. He hasn't got, he's tone deaf. What type of a gift is that? Go to a person at any music school and he hears the music from the great composers. Would you like to read, read, write music like that? Oh, it should only be. I'll give you a blessing. You can do it. Really, that's the most amazing thing. Thank you. You have to have a talent, an appreciation of <clears throat> a sense of music in order to appreciate music, to appreciate, to appreciate a blessing for music. The same thing, you have to know what God is in order to have an appreciation for what God is. What is God? So we're going to find out soon that the, one of the main things about God is, is that it's totally outside of the realm of understanding. God creates us, creates us every moment. He cares about us. He's intimately connected with every detail, every molecule, every atom, every cell in the whole entire universe. And especially human beings especially Jews, he's intimately involved and he cares and he reacts to what we do, but God himself is not, un, is not incomprehensible. That's an insult to God to say he's incomprehensible. He's not in that category at all. It's like it's asking a person a question, how exactly, what is the exact measurement of love? What does that mean? You know, like how many miles is it big? I brought this really big, you know, whatever it is, uh, a laser measurer. I want to know how big is love. That makes no sense. With how big is love? What does that mean? It makes no sense. It's not, it's not in the same category. The same thing. God is not in any category. God creates all the categories. And the godly soul of a Jew appreciates this. A regular soul appreciates spirituality. A soul is a spiritual thing. non Jews are... Non-Jews are, are spiritual also. They have a soul, soul is spiritual. A Jewish soul is not spiritual. The second soul of a Jew, it's godly. It's the creator of the spiritual. And that's what the second chapter is talking about, the second soul of the Jew. <clears throat> and as we talked about last time, it's the second one to really take effect. 
on the Jew. Some say it's a second because it's a second in importance. Because the main purpose of the godly soul is to imbue the normal soul, the spiritual soul, the, the human soul, and eventually the whole entire world with the creator, the feeling of the creator. That's the purpose. So what we're dealing with here is really something totally beyond the realm of comprehension. And we want to make it this revelation in the world. And there's something that's so good and so loving and so blessed that comprehension and understanding will realize it's just, it's just a, it's a gift from God. It's a gift from God, just like our toes are a gift from God. Animals also have toes. But the, the greatest levels of wisdom, even by the angels, by God, is it's it's like nothing. It's like so God is a reality which is beyond any reality, it's more real than anything we could possibly imagine. That's called the second soul of every Jew, and every Jew has it. So I want to tell a small story which maybe illustrates this. And today will be sort of a, a short class. We'll resume on Sunday. I was once on an Air France flight. I, I, I was traveling to the Lubavitcher Rebbe. This story must have been 30 years ago. And when I was on, anytime I was on a flight from Israel or to Israel, as I used to stand up and put, ask people if they wanted to put on tefillin. I would go down the aisle. And I would, in this case, I asked people, are you Jewish? Would you like to put on? Air France. So I figured it's coming from Israel. There must be Jews there. <clears throat> So I went down the aisle, I asked people, are the, are the some people put on to fill and some will not. I asked one person if he's Jewish. He said, he is not Jewish. But this person, he pointed to me, somebody in the middle, he said, he's Jewish. So I went over to him. Who is this person? Some famous singer in, in France. And I asked him if he would like to put on to fill and if he's Jewish. And he said, yes. And he was very, you know, very appreciative of it. And he was very, you know, uh, friendly. And he put on the tefillin and he made the blessing. Everybody was watching him. You know, everybody knows who this guy is. I had no idea who he was. You know, Pierre, who knows, whatever. So he put, a, he put on the tefillin. And I went back to my place. Anyway, this sort of caused a big stir among everybody. And three people came to me. This is on the flight, right? Three people came to me. A woman and in back of her two men. The two men did not speak French, as became evident. And she was the only one that spoke French. The French in general don't like to speak anything except for French. They're very sort of jealous and zealous about the language. Any case, so she said to me, could you tell me, Rabbi, are you a rabbi? I said, yes, I'm okay, I'm a rabbi. What, what is this that you're doing? What are these boxes? So I figured, you know, I, first of all, I didn't want to get into a big explanation. And not only that, I who knows how much of an explanation she could understand. <clears throat> and not only that, how much do I understand? You know, what, what am I going to tell her? So I thought, you know, I have to have some sort of a blessing you know, for over here. So all of a sudden I got this inspiration and I said there like this. I said, um, these are commandments of God. And it comes to show that God is not just in heaven. He's here in the world and he cares what we do. So she repeated it. And then she told the friends, the two men standing behind her. And they said, oh, oh, we said, oh, 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 oh. and then one of her said, whispered something into her ear. And she said, no. And he whispered something else, and she said, no, she didn't. So I said, what is the problem? He says, no, I, th that's, I think that's enough. So I said, they want you to say something? Say what doesn't mean. won't hurt my feelings. Say whatever you want to. So she said, well, they want to know, what is the difference between a Jew and a non-Jew? Why did God only, at least that's what you think, what is it? God gave the commandments only to the Jews, and the Bible is for the Jews. Everybody knows the Jews are different. What's the difference between a Jew and a non-Jew? So I figured I got to think quick. And not only that, I didn't want to get involved in this whole thing. I wanted to ask people to put on tefillin. So I said to them, <clears throat> all of a sudden I had another inspiration. And I said, oh, I said, the non-Jews, the Gentiles, they are the highest thing in creation. They're above the animals. They can build. They can improve. They can make inventions, music, philosophies, improve the world, non-Jews. <clears throat> They're the highest thing in creation. And the Jews are the lowest thing of the creator. We're representatives of the creator. We're God's lowest aspect. I said, the non-Jews, they're the highest part of creation. And the Jews, they are the lowest part of the creator. So she repeated that. And she said to her friends, and they said, and they were shaking my hand and everything like that. And there was, 
they were very happy. So I don't know if she, she might have just said to them, listen, this guy's nuts, you know, shake your hands and smile and let's get out of here. But I don't think so. I think that they really somehow or other appreciate it because it's true. And that's the whole thing. Everybody somewhere down deep has the sense that maybe it could be that there's a creator. I mean, no one's sure that there's not a creator. I got positive of that. Could be that there's a creator. It does say in the Bible, you know, the Jews have been believing this thing for like 3,000 years. If you take it from Abraham, it's 4,000 years. So, I mean, they do really believe it. They've been giving their lives for this thing. So either they're all just fanatics and they're nuts or whatever. But still, everybody in the human being, everybody in the human race has this feeling that there's something directing the whole thing, something bigger. It could be that you negate this feeling that you explain it away, but it's still there. And the fact that the Jewish people are, are, are infinite, they just keep hanging around. They're just here. And they, the Torah seems to be also eternal. This gives a, a feeling that maybe there's something above the whole entire program of creation. Maybe there's a creator. And this creator has some sort of a plan that he wants to show us that he cares about the world. That's the Jews and the commandments. And what I'm saying now is essentially the message of the godly soul. The godly soul. I'm saying it. I don't know if I'm saying it from my godly soul, but I'm saying because that the Rebbe certainly is saying it from his godly soul, and I've learned what he said. So let that be today's lesson. God willing, next week we'll continue. That is the godly soul. The, the, the topic of the second chapter of the Tanya, there are 43 chapters, so we've got a lot of wonderful ideas to investigate. Hope to see you all, God willing, on Sunday with Mashiach now. Shabbat Shalom.